Good afternoon. Um, I'm here. Uh, by the way, don't ask me for directions. I'm no longer the organizer. <laughs> so I'm Butch Bustria. So uh, my other role in the uh, uh, Wikimedia universe is not just organizing Wikimedia. And I'm not also just in ECAP. I'm also in the regional grants committees. So we, we would like to uh, introduce our uh, re uh, panelist here. I'm Butch Bustria. We have Nanur. Uh, Mikola, uh, we also have Matt, uh, Jack, and uh, yeah, we also have Lodivik over there and uh, Mia. Okay, where's Mia? Okay, yeah, Mia there. Okay, so um, I think uh, we have a good uh, number of people in this room. I think they are all interested about money. So, <laughs> so, so th this is the regional grants committees. So what is the Regional Grants Committee? OK, so uh, just go to the meta page. There's uh, information there about the Grants Committees. But the Regional Grants Committees is basically composed of volunteers. Uh, we're, uh, we are um, not bank loan officers. So, uh, but uh, we have some expertise into uh, um, managing the uh, uh, having projects ourselves, how to uh, look into uh, the funds and uh, and then also we, we are also here to hear uh, how the impact of those uh, projects that you want to aspire in your respective communities. So we are here to help you and we're also here to collaborate with you on how our, uh, our uh, system would need to be improved. Okay, and also in your per, uh, individual grants. Okay, so uh, how important is the Regional Grants Committee? I'll give uh, the floor to Farah uh, for uh, about this information. Farah, please. Hi there. Um, so yeah, as, uh, as Butch was saying, the Regional Grants Committees, um, you know, we, we, we take care of um, um, distributing funds in different regions. And uh, the, the Regional Grants Committee was one of the first, um, um, the first committees to be kind of decentralized because previously, like, the 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 funds dissemination was went through a like a a single uh, point of contact. So so when it was regionalized, uh, it was experts in, in different regions that have different challenges and different. Um, um, Different ways of accessing funds uh, as well. Um, so, so having this this regional um, uh, knowledge was really important to uh, to, uh, to to make it a little more equitable. Um, so, so it, it, it is uh, it is a first step in 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 having these um, you know more specialized uh, regionalized um, committees to. Um, to oversee the the, the way um, the Wikimedia movement uh, works, so fun, funding was the first one, and you know it could be a uh, precursor to other uh, regionalization in, in, in different aspects of the of the movement. Um, that's in short. Okay. So who's is that you? Sorry. I'll give to. Uh, uh, Nanur, uh, for information, what, what are the purpose and uh, function of the Regional Grant Committee? Yes. Uh, regional Fund Committee functions, yeah, uh, we are uh, uh, a decision maker for uh, the uh, allocating fund actually and uh, it not uh, it depends uh, to which uh, regional fund we are be belonging for example me it's mina and uh, sub sahara africa so uh, we are allocating the fund after the proposal that came to to the uh, to the com uh, committee but uh, uh, one thing i i think it's important to mention that the regional fund committee is uh, um, reviewing and uh, making decisions about one kind of uh, allocated fund, which is the general support fund for the affiliates and the groups for the long-term plans. Because there is many kind, other kinds of community fund. There is a rapid fund. There is, uh, we, 
Actually, we we did uh, the uh, multi years as well, right? Over uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, two. Sorry, two is a multi year uh, uh, proposal, and this is new. Uh, we started last year actually, and the uh, generous support fund. So we don't have any any review or any uh, anything about uh, the, uh, for example, alliances found, uh, conference found. Uh, uh, research funds, no, it's only the uh, general support fund. So the proposed, yes, when it starts and uh, all is related to the uh, 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 annual fiscal year. When it started after the annual plan, uh, for example, 24-25, uh, the uh, uh, regional or the, the grants uh, uh, committee or the staff there uh, release the, the, the rounds and the date. We have two rounds, round one and round two. And there, there uh, the dates, it's, it's, uh, it's brought to... Uh, uh, one to other, but it's not happening at the same time. For example, in my region, the deadline is in September. It could be in the 10th of September for another region, but the process is the same. So uh, if you are a new uh, applicant, it will be good and uh, uh, preferable to meet the officer of the region to get uh, for example, to, to understand why you want, what you need to apply for a long-term application. And when the officer stand well, why, why the need, your needs, they transmit it to us. They, if there is something that we didn't found it in the proposal, we can get it directly from the officer if you shared it with the officer. So the, this is very important to share all your inside plans with the officer if you are not putting directly on the proposal. This helps us to understand what you are thinking, what you, why you are want to do this, why, why, what is your goal that you want to achieve it. Because your goal is the movement goals too, and we want to do it all together. I'm an applicant for another uh, uh, affiliate, so I want to uh, approve my uh, uh, proposal as well. But I need to make it uh, uh, clear to my colleagues when they are going to review. So after the proposal sending, it's come to us. There is a time to, uh, I think, two, three weeks for, for individual review. We're doing it with a form that we uh, replying in a form, very detailed form. Uh, every review, every single proposal, it takes... Uh, at least um, me, after three years, it takes not less than five hours reviewing individually the, and filling it. Uh, so, and then it's uh, start, uh, um, I think it's, it's important to uh, uh, share with you the, the, all the steps. And the second uh, step is the first deliberation when uh, I, um, in my region, and uh, I suppose it's the same in the other regions as well, but uh, uh, my region is the, uh, the region that we get the most, the more number of proposal every round actually. So uh, because it's there, there is many affiliates and many uh, uh, non-recognized uh, uh, groups. So first deliberation, we uh, just uh, uh, put us in uh, groups, doing it, sending feedback to you. On the meta page, please, we need to know more about this and this and what is this, why this uh, in this course and this, be because we didn't feel that we understand directly wh why, why you put that. And after you send your uh, 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 response to us, it's a second deliberation. And then uh, the final step is that we all the committees sit together and discuss it. Uh, all. Uh, if, if we are going to approve the whole amount, if we are not going to approve the whole amount, we are increasing, we are decreasing, it depends. And uh, this, uh, this step uh, takes uh, a long time, uh, actually, as well. Because uh, if someone of us say, no, 
I'm not agreeing on that. So please, okay, we we start again discussing. So and there should be as a wiki. We are a part of wiki. A consensus that yes, we agreed to say this and this. Sometimes uh, me, I didn't agree on uh, many, uh, but, but okay, all the committee said yes. So I follow my uh, what the group decided. Sometimes my colleagues that agree. So and. Maybe, maybe, because we started three years ago, very new. We didn't have so uh, every single uh, decision was 100, 100% right. But we learned very much during this, our process. And we um, improve our process every time, believe me. When I started, it's not like that. Uh, but uh, I hope that we are more effectively and doing it more. Thank you. Next. Yeah, so uh, the funding regions of the, the ECF is, uh, I'm sorry, of the regional grant committees, as you have uh, uh, heard before that we have uh, different regions uh, split. Uh, so there is uh, the Central Eastern Europe and uh, Central Asia. Uh, so they have eight plus one. That means that uh, they have uh, eight uh, community members and plus one, uh, this, uh, the CEE hub uh, executive director who is not non-voting. Uh, us in the ESIAP region, so East, Southeast Asia and the Pacific, were about nine uh, community members there, uh, all, uh, spread from uh, Australia uh, all the way uh, in different, uh, and then uh, East and Southeast Asia, so different time zones. Uh, Latin America and Caribbean, there are about 10. Um, Middle East, North Africa, and Sub-Saharan Africa. This is quite a, 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 a unique setup. So they have two different regions, but it will be reviewed by one committee composed of 13 people. So uh, it's five and eight. And then North America, there's about six. Uh, I heard that there are also some uh, thematic organizations that are based in the United States, but, uh, but uh, they are global in scope. So uh, they are, they are uh, the... Uh, the funding region to review the application is uh, North America. We also have the Northern and uh, Western Europe, which is one of the biggest uh, ones that is being given, uh, and uh, South Asia, about six. So yes. So uh, let me give to Mikola on the selection process of uh, the Regional Grants Committee's membership. Uh, yes, so it's a selection process which means so far it's selection. It might be an election because we all heard about the new proposals. Let's not talk about it now. We will talk about how it works now because the proposals may change 10 more times before they become reality. So at the moment it is a selection process. It's still relatively democratic because it has almost 100% election rate. Uh, not because we accept uh, everybody, but especially because we don't have enough qualified candidates. So if you know somebody who wants to join a grant committee, please encourage them to do this. What we do, for example, in Northern and Western Europe, and I know that it is done to a certain extent in other regions, we tried to map like what skills, what experiences we want to have in the committee members, and we map them on people who are already sitting on the committee, and we map on like people whom we want to welcome. So we like try to design a portrait of like people who we want to encourage to have. This might be related on their like geographic basis. So for example, if we want to look for somebody who has experience in Nordics, like the Scandinavian region, because for our North and Western Europe, it's important to have like representation of this region. We want to have like somebody from Southern Europe, from Iberian Peninsula, for example, because that's also like a culturally, geographically important region. We want to have a native English speaker because that's not a given diversity. It's also diversity. So like we want also like semantic experts. We want somebody who has experience with minority languages. We want somebody who has experience with glams. We want somebody who has experience with education because these are topics on which we receive many grant applications and we want to have somebody who worked on this already to like objectively evaluate this with already some insight. So after mapping all of this and needing to fit it into like eight or 10 people, we really go headhunting saying like, oh, this is the profile of people we need. We know like three good people who match this profile. We try to encourage them to join us. We also have people who volunteer 
and we are very grateful for them because they are usually already very motivated, so we don't need to convince them to become motivated. So that's already great. Uh, but generally, it's not like a very competitive process. We usually have like two or three applications per round, and the rounds are every summer, I think. Maybe it will move a bit. Now. Yeah, now it's continuous. Yeah, now it's continuous. So if you want to volunteer for a grant committee, please do. If you know somebody who has like an interest in this or who has a good profile, please do. And an important thing, you don't need to be expert in everything. It's if you're just like interested in reviewing proposals, you can, you're good at giving feedback. You're good at like, or you want to learn to give feedback because we also have trainings. We not all like joined ready grant committee members. We were trained by foundation. We were trained by our peers to review proposals better to understand like how this grant making works and how we can make it better. So please join us or please invite people to join us. We need more grant committee members and it's not like something where you need to be an expert in everything. You just need to be willing to do it. And if you have any of like relevant experiences, that's already great. Uh, and the next, oh, I have a clicker. And then let's talk about how a proposal is reviewed and decided by the regional grant committee. It's Yumiya, right? Hello. Okay, this is so tall. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mia. I'm from Indonesia. Probably my English is not so good, so I will speak slow, okay? Yeah. So um, I will tell you a story to make it clear and um, clear. For you, yeah. So this is my experience uh, as the committee. So my program officer is Jacqueline, so from the ESEAP. So once the application uh, submitted to uh, wiki, uh, to Meta Wiki, Jacqueline will send a document like the summary of the proposal, something like that. And then Jacqueline also will send us the document and what she thinks and what's like the insights of Jacqueline's uh, personal of view of this uh, proposal, okay? And then after that, Jacqueline will ask the committee to review all the things. And Jacqueline also will give us like a column so we can give uh, questions to the applicants. And then we will give time around two weeks or three weeks, right? And then the applicants will go back to us will answer something like that and then for the last one we will have a meeting with the applicants like in one meeting imagine like it will take around two and a half hours so all of the applicants will be meet us so every applicant will meet us around five until 15 minutes so it will be a session that uh, we will have like communication directly between us and we will ask like uh, what kind of team that you have what do you need and what's your goal something like that and then uh, in the end we will have a discussion probably like we will have a uh, voting so Butch will vote I will vote and then later on the program committee will review all of the decision from the committee and then also Jacqueline ask some few from the other staff for example in ECAP we have Sakti as the partnership uh, specialist for the ECAP and and also like probably if there is a project about education Jacqueline also will ask the education staff from the Wikimedia Foundation so there's a lot of um, views like from the committee so like we have we just give a suggestion right to the foundation like as the volunteer and then Jacqueline also will see how's the other stuff seeing this project something like that yeah that's the process and yeah and then how we uh, review the criteria so we uh, receive some of the projects like for example um, in Indonesia Oh, I forget to say that um, all of us should declare conflict of interest. For example, I'm Indonesian, so I cannot. Sorry. We will talk at next time more. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, something like that. And then um, I will 
uh, I cannot uh, vote for Indonesian something like that. And then we will review all of the projects. Uh, like, is it clear? Like, um, what kind of goals that you want to achieve something like that? And then the second one, what the impact? We will see how the impact will go uh, beyond the reg- uh, the region or globally. And then for the third one, this is also very uh, interesting because sometimes uh, in one application, they have big goals, but they do not have any enough team. So we will see, uh, like, uh, because like all of us like volunteers, so we know how the project works, right? And then we will see like, um, maybe we can suggest like, um, sorry, maybe this project is too big for your team. Like probably you can decrease the goal the goal something like that so we also give like feedback for the applicants and then for the last one we also see how uh, they will learn and what kind of evaluation that they will uh, achieve next one is who oh matt okay thank you okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna be brief i'm gonna talk a little bit about conflicts of interest and how we manage those. I know we're trying to save 15 minutes for Q&A, so I'll try to be quick with that. Generally, um, when I think about conflicts of interest uh, from the perspective of the the Regional Grants Committee members, I'm thinking of committee members who are, you know, evaluating a particular grant proposal. um, If they have a particular vested interest in that particular organization or in that proposal, they will recuse themselves from uh, from that evaluation process. Um, The other thing that we do on the US and Canada committee is actually going so far as we're not even sharing some of the proposal and the evaluation docs, the documents that we're using to evaluate the proposal with those individuals that have uh, recused themselves. It's definitely a balancing act uh, because in in the the Wikimedia community, we're all wearing multiple hats all the time, uh, especially volunteers in the committee. So I've been, for instance, teaching with uh, Wikipedia through Wiki Education for a long time, um, but I'm not part of that organization formally and I don't have a vested interest necessarily in their particular proposal. So in that particular case, um, I wouldn't excuse myself. But hopefully we'll hear some some other questions about conflicts um, later in the Q&A as well. And I'm just gonna briefly kind of introduce um, this next slide, which is about our own experiences. Um, I think yesterday when I was meeting, you know, my fellow committee members, I had said I, I've been doing this for about two years. And then I looked uh, at my bio on Event Yay, and it said three years. And I had written that bio statement. So I think actually, in fact, it's been three years since the, the, new, uh, since the formation of this new structure for the regions. Um, I really wanted to kind of give back to Wikimedia in a different way. And I really wanted to see what kinds of projects people were doing, right? So getting to uh, you know read the proposals um, and really take a generative stance in terms of giving feedback has been really rewarding the last three years. Um, This past year, I felt like things tightened and became a lot more crowded in terms of the funding. We were not really able to to fund everyone the the amount that we wanted to, and that's really tough as well. Um, But at the end of the day, everyone on the committee is you know, just very interested in giving really good feedback and in helping the applicants. And that's a, that's a really wonderful thing. Uh, the other thing I'll say briefly, and then I'll ask others to share their personal experiences from other committees, um, is that Wikimedia's um, transparency is, is such an advantage if you're, if you're thinking about going after a grant through Wikimedia go and look at some of the previous successful grants on META um, and and, and think about, well, what is it that makes these successful, right? Usually it comes down to clear metrics. How do we measure the success of this project um, and clear objectives for kind of getting there, okay? Um, 
on, right? Yeah. Yeah. So on our experiences side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Stay up here. Yeah, on our experiences side from North and Western Europe, we Europeans like to complain about money. So unfortunately, we in grant committees do not print money. So it's not us who can say, oh, hey, we need like <laughs> one million dollars more. We will just print them. Unfortunately, we cannot do this. So we usually have like pretty strong money constraints, say in like foundation allocated like two or three million, for example, for the whole year. And we need to distribute this for both rounds, including for people who have not submitted these, their applications yet. So this is a quite difficult exercise, especially like in the last two years in the inflation context in the region. So what we tried to do in our committee is to like evaluate the proposals with a pessimistic and an optimistic lens. So we try to say like, mm. if we have enough money, that's what we want to fund. If we don't have enough money, we will cut maybe like the least impactful project in our opinion or like the most risky experiment or like the most like ambitious expansion. So it's not about saying like, oh, we want to cut like one specific person because we don't like them, but we wanted to make like a collective effort saying like, if we don't have enough money, we don't want to give like 100% to somebody and like zero to everybody else. Mm -hmm. So we need to find like some balance that everybody feels a bit unhappy which is like very sad place to be in, but we, if we cannot make everybody happy, we try to make like everybody a bit unhappy and then try to discuss with others like what they can do with like 90% of money, what they can do with like 80% of money and find like some very tough balance in the middle. Just make it uh, make it quick and easy up. Actually, we just need to make sure that the the grant grant uh, applicant will have a a a, a, clar a clarified uh, uh, submission. Uh, sometimes uh, we impliedly coaching the applicant. Uh, I think uh, you may need to consider improving uh, your your matrices so that it would be clear f uh, to be achieved. And then after some, some revisions, there are times that uh, the, the grant application is approved uh, eventually, but there are times that really we have to, no other choice but to decline the application because the, the applicant had no uh, willing to, to improve the, the grant application. Okay, let me give to Noor. Yes, um, actually, um, I personally get very, very uh, uh, positive uh, points and uh, experience uh, um, being in this committee because since they started with uh, Veronica, we had a, a plan of resources to how to make a decision, how to work together, how to be in uh, handling found uh, together, and uh, yeah, this helped me help my community very much and uh, the keep going the the pro the progress. Uh, along the way, we have every time we have some updates on the process. Okay, <laughs> what is that? We have uh, coming uh, for five, six months after we have another update. Yes, uh, so we keep developing the things. This is very important and uh, make me personally close to the communities much more. And this uh, help uh, uh, sometimes. Uh, to when I know about the projects that the people running, I uh, I go to them say why you are not uh, propose your project for uh, this Wikimania for example, mm -hmm. and they accepted it for in the program to present their project. They didn't mm -hmm. know that uh, it, this uh, could happen. This is very very positive, and we we're dealing with a uh, emergent groups in our region. Most of them in the last three years they they uh, uh, went from the rapid fund to the general support found and and understanding and explaining them that they okay i have to stop sorry <laughs> none were said at all so, <laughs> so. yeah okay so uh, build the next slide yeah okay so uh this uh, particular slide i will uh give the the floor to the wikimedia foundation through veronica Hi, everyone. Uh, for those who we haven't met, my name is Veronica Thamaini. 
um, support the program officers uh, within community resources team. And this is... Hello, I'm Jorge Vargas, Director of Partnerships, and as of recently, also of Community Resources. So now I'm going to be working more closely with you all on all of the grant making related matters. Yeah. So we know one of the topics we did want to spend time on during our time together was uh, connected to the recent <coughs> proposed um, uh, projects, uh, initiatives related, connected to the vote uh, on the movement charter by the board. Uh, so three things because we, we want to create space at least for yes uh, one question or two we will have a conversation on Friday and I'll put the details here five to six uh, in the Belgrade room targeted at this proposal uh, in the meantime we don't have the answers this is a proposal and we're looking to figure it out or create um, on what it would look like, especially on the what and, and the how together. And um, also recognizing that uh, all we are welcoming all feedback to be you know, shared on Meta. But we're here, Jorge and I, uh, to answer any immediate questions you, you may have. But Friday is a good space to have this conversation. And thank you to the committee members for this session. So uh, should we just open it for Q&A right now? Yeah. Oh, next. Questions. There you go. <laughs> yeah, just maybe like before the Q&A, just like a, a reminder, if you are not fully aware of what proposal Veronica was referring to, this was something that you can find on the appendix of the board resolution of the Movement Charter Drafting Committee vote by the Board of Trustees, where they vote no to ratify, but they suggest the creation of a Global Funds Dissemination Committee. So that's gonna be an additional layer to the Regional Fund Committees as it's being proposed. And Veronica and I and all of us are here to chat. And by the way, like I'm also part of the Movement Charter Drafting Committee. So from that lens, I can also help answer any questions. And with that, I'll pass the mic. Please. Hello. I have a question about restrictions regarding transferring money. Is that a problem that you cannot accept funds from some countries because it's not allowed to transfer money to that country? Yeah. Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, and, and it's two parts. It's regulation related to the foundation being a US registered or, you know, organization. Additionally, there are cases where sending foreign funding to a country results or can imply harm to Wikimedians. And we do, these are things that we always assess. Hence, you know, Nanru's recommendation and now a requirement that if anyone is interested in the larger funds, especially general support fund, the first step is to speak with a program officer because then they already are aware within their region where we can send funding or not. And sometimes even when we can't directly send to a grantee, we can actually still support that through other uh, mission aligned partners, hence fiscal um, sponsorship. Yeah. There, there was one there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I have a question. It's mainly about the evaluation process. Uh, we noticed, like, for for our group, whenever we submit, and almost every year we uh, we get different evaluators, but they often come back and ask the same question, which, which kind of shows that there is a little bit of this discontinuity, and we have to repeatedly explain to different uh, different individuals every year to explain it could be about money matter, it could be insurance, it could be cultural differences. So I'm just trying to see, like, is there a way to kind of like make it a little bit more flowing smoothly so we don't have to keep clarifying the same question to different uh, evaluators year after year? Okay. Do you mind sharing uh, your first name and where you're from? And where you're from. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Long from Canada, representing Thank you. WikiJournal User Group. Uh, Thank you. Um, thank you for the question, Andrew. We have had success success with holding more Zoom meetings um, before the grant the, the proposal comes in. And in your case especially, that's what I would suggest is like meeting, which I'm I'm sure you've probably met with the officer. 
um, requesting uh, that the officer convene a meeting with the committee and with the wiki journal um, the, the main people that are submitting the proposal. I think that that would be the best step and do that early for the next round. Yeah. Okay, um, I have two questions. Um, I think that um, in the presentation, you mentioned that the goal of the committee is to ensure equitable distribution of funds. And I wanted to know how you do this in terms of distribution to various regions and then um, specific organizations in terms of their programmatic areas as well. And then my second question is about the capacity. Um, you mentioned that some people um, bring grants or proposals which you think they do not have the capacity to fulfill all those goals. Um, so for organizations that have been working in specific and um, programmatic areas for a while, how do you support these people to build capacity to um, achieve their goals? Because if you've been around for a while and have done the same things, obviously you do not want to have the same goals year on. After every year, you would want to at least um, you know, have a bigger target. But you cannot do that with the same number of people. And so if you think that the goals are not achievable for such organizations how um do you support them to get that capacity i'm jail from um, open foundation west africa and we are based in ghana thank you thank you jail the first one who's answering mikhail you can go okay yeah, the first one is foundation. There's, yeah. there's, there's equitable distribution. Yeah, distribution. But you can, can do answer. the region. You can go first. Oh, yeah, I can answer. The first one is just for the foundation. The answer is the foundation who decides distribution of money per region. We, as a grant committee, do not have an impact on this beyond like we can talk to the foundation and say, hey, we need more money. We rarely say, hey, we want less money. <laughs> Although it might happen, but uh, the, the answer is simple. It might change again. Not clear how, but within our committees, for example, what we do in Northern Western Europe, we try to set like some priorities. So we say like, with limited money, we want to make sure like the smaller emerging groups get like the least cuts this year. Or for example, we want to say that like we want to guarantee that like salary salary indexation by inflation gets funded for every affiliate or so on. So like there are priorities that we can set at the regional level. And for the second part, I would say again, what we do, maybe it's a bit different in other regions. Uh, we tried to say, if somebody is missing capacity, is there any way to remediate it? So we ask them questions. For example, we are saying like, you want to launch this big project. Have you considered like any ways to increase your capacity, which can be like hiring people with a specific expertise, can be like some specific training by some external party, or learning from peers, because we have Let's Exchange program, which we will definitely have a separate session on. Or maybe you can invite like a specialized consultant, for example, if you want to improve, let's say, your communications as an organization. There are organizations that can help you do this for your uh, for your group or chapter. So there are a lot of ways to remediate like the lack of capacity. And we don't prescribe ways. We invite you to reflect on this and say, like, we can think of like three options. You can pick option four, but. And I'm going to, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to uh, answer a little bit more uh, clarity on the first question. So the Wikimedia Foundation currently is the one that decides how much percentage of the total budget goes towards grant making. And uh, part of the discussion within the Movement Charter Drafting Committee process was to see if that could change. It resulted, at least in how it was proposed in the charter, that it had to remain the same. However, right now the proposal that's going to be more discussed on Friday talks about this global funds dissemination body that is an additional layer to the regional fund committees. And that body can be part of a conversation or a discussion with the foundation on how much budget to be assigned. And then that body plus the regional fund committees would have the uh, authority or responsibility of deciding out of that budget that is presented, how it gets distributed across the eight regions that currently exist. But this is why this proposal that was put forward is very important for all of you to engage and see 
what makes sense, what does not make sense. Friday session is to do that, but the meta page is currently active to be able to receive more of that information, considering that the charter was not ratified. Yeah. I'll, I'll add to that. Uh, and this year we did, you know, take a shot at what does it look like to involve, um, have participatory budgeting process. Uh, it's not the main envelope. We uh, that one of the principles we operated on was we we do not have you know um, and the next body will have that discretion of negotiating on the bigger envelope. But when it comes to regional specific envelopes, we did involve uh, the regional funding committees uh, for these financial years budget and a working group from the larger EDs group uh, to first of all share based on you know the weighted average inflation rates from the different regions but also conversations with um, projections made by program officers based on different conversations they've had with uh, different affiliated and non-affiliated groups. Uh, and based on those numbers, the committee is sharing their input. We, a lot of the, one of the things that emerged is that we didn't shift those numbers uh, a lot, apart from one region that with the support of the regional funding committee, we were able to recognize we may have missed, uh, we, we left out uh, an element that was important, so we increased it by an, an additional uh, percentage. Um, yeah. And we, time out. Okay. Thank you. It's not a question. I want to know your opinion. Because uh, when in, in the case of a declination of a proposal, actually the process doesn't have a way of appealing or a reviewing the final decision. And I think it's very concerning because in democratic countries you need you have the elementary right to appeal one decision. And no is no is not a good healthy practice. So I don't know I want to know your opinion if needs to exist a process a process of, of appealing or a reviewing uh, decision of the committee. And the second one is that, uh, at least in my region, the, the foundation or, and the committee is inviting external people of, uh, of the movement mm -hmm. to join more experience. But uh, some informal conversation with some members of the regional committee of my region says that that persons maybe are not sure giving exactly opinions about how our movement works. So I, 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 don't, I want to know your opinion about these topics. Thank can, you. Can you share what region you're talking about? I, I'm Latin America. In fact, I wanted. In what I I, I appeal I apply, apply it for the committee and my candidacy was not accepted. <laughs> but for for the appeal, maybe I'm just kidding. So uh, just uh, to apply next year as an appeal. <laughs> just, but no, uh, I think when we reject and it's rarely, very rarely reject completely. It, I can't say it just. Uh, 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 decrease the amount, but not reject saying no. It's happened recently, but it took more time to discuss this many, many, many times and uh, discuss again with the applicant. And uh, this was uh, more the part of the officers to say that go, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, if if they uh, uh, stay and say because we have uh, some. I can say it's not facts, but the results of the the uh, the uh, the last year, for example, outcomes that we we waiting for have it. Uh, so wh when we don't have these outcomes that the applicant plan to implement it, so we we have a question: what, Why we have to support you if you cannot implement your plan? and okay. get the, uh, the outcomes of that. So there is a reason, always a reason, so that we discuss the reasons uh, behind that. So in general, it's like that, but in any special case in your region, sorry, I cannot. Yeah, yeah uh, I can we, we heard your, your case, uh, Ivan, uh, but uh, yeah, we'll try to give it to our uh, mm -hmm. LAC uh, Commit, uh, our uh, mm -hmm. regional fronts committee member so for a, a uh, regional context on your case. Yeah, and for the second question, I can briefly ask what we had similar experience, not exactly the same, that we also invited like some semi Wikimedians, let's say people who interacted with us before, like outside partners, like Glam Education partners, and so on. I would say there are two, two, two ways to two ways to solve this. One way is onboarding training. So we work with these people to say, like, here is what you want to learn. You can attend these sessions and get better at understanding our movement. Second way is, unfortunately, people say, like, I cannot do this. And they either become, like, an invited expert. They switch, like, 
to another stage you say like give expertise on some specific topics without being involved in whole discussions or like just give up because which is unfortunate but like this also can happen yeah so uh thank you everyone um yeah we would like to invite the executive directors uh of uh, uh of our wikimedia affiliates uh, to the uh, conversation on Friday at uh, five o'clock in the afternoon uh, regarding the, um, the fund uh, proposal. Yes. Uh, uh, also, they, hub leaders. Yeah, right? hub hub leaders. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, and past uh, fund dissemination committees. Yes. For, yeah, yeah, like it will be a great conversation. Uh, on on, uh, on Friday. So uh, we would like to thank everyone for this one. I, uh, there are some questions, but I will try to uh, accommodate those questions probably outside. And uh, thank you, uh, Wikimedia uh, Central and Eastern Europe, for the pri this privilege. And uh, thank you for having it recorded this time. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.